Okay, today we're going to put into practice um, our knowledge of solving systems of equations, and we're going to do it um, in order to solve problems, which is why you would use um, a system of equations. So here we have a problem that says, John has 15 coins, all dimes and quarters, worth $2.55. How many dimes and how many quarters does John have? So we've done these problems before this year using one variable. So I'm just going to show you really quickly how to do it in one variable. All right, but you don't have to copy this down. And then I'm going to follow it up and do the same problem problem in two variables. Okay, um, I really like to use a table because it keeps me um, kind of focused here. And basically when you're counting up coins, you want to count up how many of each type of coin you have times their value of each coin in order to get the total amount of money that you have for that coin. Okay, and in this problem, we happen to have dimes and quarters. Okay, and as you know, dimes are worth 10 cents and quarters are worth 25 cents. So that's a really easy box to fill in. All right, now we have to kind of deal with the number of coins that we have. Um, if you have 15 coins in all, and I don't know how many are each, I can say um, that X is the number of dimes he has. Now, if he has X dimes, this is where we had to get to that point where the rest of his coins are quarters. So 15 is all the coins he has all together. If we take away the number of dimes from that, what's left over is what he has in quarters. And then in order to do this, you'd multiply across the table, if you remember, and you get 10X. And then down on the bottom, you get 25 times the quantity of 15 minus X, like that. Okay, and then we'd set up an equation um, where we take the amount of money he has in, in dimes plus the amount of money he has in quarters and add it all together and set it equal to $2.55. Now, hold on one second. All right, this is in dollars, but I had chosen to make this cents and cents. So we need to erase back this $2.55 and make it 255 cents like that. Okay, so solve. And you can see there that he has eight dimes. Now, if he has eight dimes, whoops, we're going to set up the table in the same way. Okay, so the headings are still there, and I'd like you to have this copied down. You don't have to copy the word problem down. All right, and then the value each is still 10 cents for a dime. It's still 25 cents for a quarter. Um, all right, and now when we go to set up the number of coins, we can say that we have X dimes and Y quarters or D dimes and Q quarters, however you kind of want to work it, all right? And then the table works the same. If you have D dimes and they're worth 10 cents each, then your total amount of money in dimes is 10, 10 D, and your total amount of money in quarters is 25 Q. Okay, so now we've got if we use two variables, you need two equations. Okay, so the first equation could be like that same old equation that we wrote before, where 10 dimes plus 25Q is equal to $2.55, and don't forget to make it cents. All right, now we need another equation if we're going to solve this, and the other equation comes from here. He has 15 coins in all. And so this becomes the number of dimes plus the number of quarters equals 15. And now we have our system of equations that we can solve, all right? And so you're going to solve this equation on the right for either D or Q because these are the ones without coefficients. So what I would do is have you pause right now, try to solve this system, and we'll check back with the answer in a second. Okay, so yours might look a little different depending on what you solved for. I chose to solve for the Q here, just sort of randomly, um, and I got negative D um, plus 15, which you can see that I substituted in place of the Q over here and then solved. And then what I got for my answer was D equals 8, so that means he's got 8 dimes. And then you just come back up here to this problem and say 8 plus what equals 15, and so that must mean he has 7 quarters. So notice the answer is really the same, and hopefully it's the same as the answer you got, but just the strategy was a little easier. It was easier to set up with two variables, okay? But then we had the added thing of having to come up with two equations. So it's a little bit of a pun intended coin toss, um, whether you think it's easier to solve with one variable or two variables. Of course, since we're doing a unit right now on two variables, I'm going to ask that you solve this one using two variables. Okay, we're going to go through two more examples together, and I think for some of you, especially, it's really important that you um, understand what the heading here is. Ann and Betty have money. Um, I don't even know if we need a table for this one. Okay, yeah, I got rid of my table, um, but if you're not going to use a table, then you do need a let statement. So Ann and Betty together have $60, so I'm going to say let A equal Ann's money. 
Okay, so after you do a lead statement then, then you're just going to um, force yourself to write two equations here. Ann and Betty together have $60. Okay, and then we're going to write the second equation. It says Ann has $9 more than twice Betty's amount. And so if you if you do that one, it can be a little tricky to translate, but if you just translate it like almost word for word, it works out sort of well. When it says and, um, you would just write the letter A. And then the has is really like sort of like the is, and it kind of indicates the e equation part of it. And it, she, she has nine more than twice Betty. And so it looks like that. And you can see now that this is perfectly set up to solve using substitution. So I'm going to let you press pause and then let's compare our answers in a second because I feel like you know how to do the substitution part. Okay, so you can see here I substituted the A in place um, of A right here in this equation and I solved down and I got my B equals 17. So I know that Betty has $17 and that means that Ann has 17 times 2 or 34, 34 plus 9 is $43 and I can add them up and just make sure they add 60, and that's correct. All right, let's do one more together. Okay, so this one is about investments into two different um, accounts, and for this one I do believe we need a table, so I'll let you set it up. Maybe you could even try putting a heading on to see if you remember what the heading is going to be. Hey, here's what I put for my heading. Remember, interest is equal to principal times rate times time. And so let's get some things going here. He says he has $8,000 invested in stocks and bonds. Um, Stocks pay 4% interest, so I'm going to put that as a decimal under rate, and the bonds pay 7% interest, so as a decimal 0.07. All right, if her annual income, meaning one year, um, from the stocks and bonds is 500, how much is invested in bonds? And so here's where we're going to do it differently, okay? Before, if you remember, don't write this down, okay? If we knew that the total amount invested was $8,000, then we might have said that they put... Um, X in bonds because that's the question being asked and then we would say 8,000 minus X the rest of the money gets invested in stocks all right but now we have the power to do it in two variables so that's how I'd like you to do it now and so let's just make stocks X and bonds Y um, just because I don't like to use S or B because they get mixed up with fives and sixes so anyway that's that and if you remember how the table works you just multiply across the right so 0.04x and 0.07y because multiplying by one doesn't do anything and then it says the total amount of income meaning interest is equal to five hundred dollars so one of our equations is 0.04x plus 0.07y is equal to five hundred dollars okay now we need to come up with another equation and that comes from this eight thousand dollars Okay, which means the amount of principal, the total, if you, want to, if you want to put this in the table, you can. The total amount of principal was $8,000, and the total amount of interest was 500 And so your two equations come from adding these guys up and adding these guys up. So your second equation will just simply look like x plus y equals 8000 Okay, so pause right here and see if you can solve this using substitution. I am, just so you know, going to solve for y. You could have just as easily solved for x. Um, looking at this one, you could choose to substitute as is, or you could choose to multiply through by 100 and clear out the decimals. Your choice. Okay, and you can see that I got for my answer, x is equal to $2,000. So I come on up here to like my let statement or my table, and that tells me that the stocks... He has $2,000 in, okay, which I'm not necessarily interested in um, because the question is really asking about bonds. And so then I just need to go to this equation and say the opposite of 2,000 plus 8,000 is 6,000. And this is going to be my final answer, $6,000 in bonds. Okay, that's kind of it. There's um, some different types of problems, but I think you'll be able to handle those when I see you in class tomorrow. Thanks.